A massive fire breaks out in the UK, engulfing a battery recycling center in flames. Meanwhile, over in Georgia, another battery recycler has been dealing with fires almost every other month since opening in 2023, and they recently came dangerously close to major disaster. With more batteries in use than ever before, we need a safe and effective way to get rid of them. But the process of recycling these batteries comes with serious fire risk. So what's causing these fires and what can be done to prevent them? The devastating blaze in Withenshaw, a southern suburb of Manchester, sent black smoke billowing into the air. Residents miles away reported hearing explosions. Some even thought Russia launched an attack on the UK. The fire started at the portable battery recycling facility in a local industrial park, prompting evacuations for nearby residents. According to local reports, the fire may have started in lorries, which for those of us in the US, it's a funny way of saying tractor trailer. It's common for recyclers to store materials in trailers while waiting to process them or ship them out. Fires in the recycling industry are uncomfortably common, and batteries have become a major problem. Recently, I've been working with the recycling industry alongside with IC Fire Prevention to help reduce these risks. Ken Kunze, a retired fire chief and owner of IC Fire Prevention, has been working with the recycling industry for the last 10 years to address fire hazards. Ken, what's your opinion on the role batteries play in these types of fires? Throughout the recycling industry, we have batteries coming in. And everything that comes through society ends up in the recycling stream and so batteries, along with large quantities of combustible materials, uh, have created large fires. And the Recycled Materials Association has worked very hard to help their members and non-members to control that risk. I've been a part of that. Back in uh, 2021, I did a study of uh, recycling fires. And I found out that uh, about 33% of the fires reported in the industry happened in the process of separating the materials or preparing the materials. And uh, another 30% were caused by a lack of good inbound source control and identifying what the risks are when they arrive at the facility. Unfortunately, recycling facilities don't always catch batteries before they end up in the pile. A recycling center in Banks County, Georgia, only accepts paper, plastic, and metals. Yet in 2023, the facility went up in flames. Smoke was visible for 10 miles away, and the fire quickly spread from the pile to the building, completely destroying the recycling center. Firefighters battled the flames for four days, dumping over 3 million gallons of water before they finally extinguished that fire. When the fire was investigated, workers found a large quantity of lithium-ion batteries buried in the pile, likely causing that fire. And this wasn't an isolated incident. According to a lawsuit, a local battery company, SK Battery, had been illegally dumping and delivering large quantities of lithium-ion pouch-style batteries to the facility. In fact, this had reportedly happened six times before this fire. If SK Battery sounds familiar, that's because they manufacture the battery cells used in the Ford Lightning. In October of 2024, SK Battery agreed to a $31 million settlement, ending the lawsuit by the recycling center where they claimed that they were illegally dumping hazardous lithium-ion scrap batteries at their facility. Despite the settlement, SK Battery did not admit liability, but you can kind of read between the lines. It's also interesting to note that the owner of that recycling center raised serious concerns about the company's practices. He alleged that SK Battery destroyed critical evidence during the litigation, and he also warned the community about the potential safety hazards tied to their operations. These types of facilities do have a risk of large fires that pose a serious risk to the surrounding community. One of the biggest challenges I've seen in the recycling industry is just how quickly things can become messy and unorganized around those processing areas. But how does that lead to fires? If you're going to keep your fuel sources separated from an ignition source, the best way to do that is through good housekeeping measures. And I think what you're referring to there is process spillage. Um, process spillage is when something's supposed to stay in the process, but it doesn't. So in your recycling process, if there's something along the way that doesn't stay in the process and creates a hazard, either that leak or spill has to be controlled or, or cleaned up on a regular basis in order to prevent the risk from building up. In February 2025, a fire broke out at the Ascend Elements Battery Recycling Plant in Covington, Georgia. That marked the 14th incident since the facility opened in March of 2023. 
the blaze ignited a truck trailer loaded with lithium-ion batteries from electric vehicles. Fortunately, firefighters were able to stop the flames from spreading to a nearby warehouse filled with additional batteries awaiting recycling. Had that fire reached the warehouse, it could have led to mass evacuations, a shutdown of a major nearby highway, and just really overall community mistrust. These types of ongoing issues not only erode community trust, but they also damage the reputation of the entire industry. So how do battery recyclers reduce the risk of these fires? You can't have large fires unless you have large quantities of fuel. So uh, storing the batteries in smaller quantities, separated from other quantities of batteries uh, in the proper types of facilities, and again, monitoring them carefully is going to help to identify these risks. It's extremely important for anyone in the recycling industry to take fire safety seriously. Battery recycling is still an emerging industry, and it's going through some serious growing pains. That's exactly why I've been working alongside Ken to help reduce these risks. I can talk about these fires on YouTube all day, but real action happens on the ground. Working with these facilities to help keep their employees and communities safe. So how do recyclers take meaningful steps to prevent these fires before they happen? What I see fire prevention does is through a series of assessments, we're able to identify risks and give uh, recyclers specific proactive steps to prevent fires from happening. But it's more than just that. It's about engaging their employees in the process and their local fire departments. You know, your local authority having jurisdiction, your local fire department decides how the codes are going to be applied. So you should get to know them. But also they're going to be the ones that respond. And so you should have a good working relationship with them. And again, back to engaging employees in the process. I think it's critical because although management has the responsibility to control these things, it's the frontline employees that make the difference. They're the first ones to be able to create a hazard and the first ones to be impacted by a hazard. So they need to be a big part of the equation. Owners, supervisors, and all employees need to come together to understand the risks inside these facilities. One key area is to focus on incipient stage fires, which is just another term for small fires that are still in their early stages. These fires might start out small, but if not properly managed, they can quickly escalate into major incidents. As a part of our process, recyclers are aware that incipient stage fires may occur. However, we have a responsibility to make sure that those incipient stage fires don't become community disasters. So controlling pile size and being able to detect and respond effectively to those incipient stage fires is going to be crucial to protecting our communities. Fires like these are happening more and more, and the risks are only growing. That's why fire prevention and battery recycling isn't just important. It's critical for protecting workers, communities, and first responders. If there's one thing you can do to help, never throw lithium-ion batteries in the trash or recycling bin. These fires often start because someone unknowingly tossed a dead or end-of-life battery into their household recycling. I'm working on a YouTube video right now that'll show you exactly how to safely dispose of lithium-ion batteries, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it.